Start planning an application by answering a couple of fundamental questions. Why does your organization want to create the application? What are its purpose and goals? Following that, you'll want to describe what a successful application looks like by coming up with a few performance measures that align with your goals. This lesson concludes with an overview of the planning components that will be explained in the remainder of the course. It's important that everyone in your organization agrees on the purpose and goals of a new application. Is it being created to solve a problem, automate a process, comply with laws or regulations, or some other reason? State in writing the purpose of the application and the main goals it should achieve. Share this statement with other stakeholders to reach a consensus. In addition to getting everyone on the same page, this step defines the scope of the application. As development proceeds, anyone can refer to this original purpose statement, especially if there are questions about adding features that are beyond the baseline goals or scope of the application. Before you learn how to build various supporting objects for your app, we want to orient you to our use case, Acme Auto. In this course, we're going to architect the application, and throughout the remainder of this learning path, we'll show you how to build and configure the objects we define through our planning. The purpose of the Acme Auto application is to track the status of vehicles in the corporate fleet and log maintenance requests for every vehicle. We're building this application to resolve Acme's problem of tracking available vehicles in its fleet and keeping a complete and easy to search maintenance history for each vehicle. Now let's talk about what success looks like. If your application works as planned, what would be the result? Measurable results usually start with action verbs. In the case of Acme Auto, success is defined as improving vehicle status reporting to 100% accuracy in tracking 100% of maintenance history for all vehicles in the fleet. Next, let's explore the basic components of application planning. Let's take a look at what each one means in broad terms. The first things to consider are personas and groups. A persona is a representation of a group of people who will work in your application. You'll need to identify who will interact with the application and the key activities that each persona needs to perform. Defining the persona will inform you how the user should interact with the application. Is this going to be the person's only job? Are they going to pop in and out of the application? Are they on the go and using a mobile device? These questions help shape navigation around the application. Defining the activities for each persona will also help you define groups, which are used to configure security in an application. Groups enable users to view and interact with different application components, such as records, reports, and processes. The second thing to consider is records. In Appian, data is managed primarily through record types. Record types help you define the data model used in your application. Users can view and take action on data using records. Record type data can come from a variety of places, including relational databases, Appian processes, and web services. You can create record type relationships to connect data across records and use them to create integrated views of data from different sources. During the planning stage, you'll want to identify the record types that need to be created. You'll also want to think about how to relate different record types to ensure you have easy access to the data you need. For example, at Acme Auto, there is a vehicle record type and a separate maintenance record type. After creating a record type for each entity, you'll create a one-to-many relationship between the vehicle and maintenance record types. This enables users to view and access maintenance activities associated with each vehicle. Setting up the record type relationship creates a link between fields and the two record types. Next, there are process models. Process models drive actions performed in an application. As a standard practice, most organizations document their business processes by drawing workflow diagrams. This entails defining what happens during each step of a process, 
and sequencing the steps in the order in which they should be performed. Lastly, there are reports. Reports visualize data aggregated across records. Appian provides multiple reporting formats, including grids, pie charts, bar graphs, and more. During the planning stage, it's important to identify the data that needs to be reported and how that data will be collected and calculated. Report content can impact the data structure, so you'll want to finalize report planning before you finalize the data structure in your application. Let's recap before ending the lesson. It's a good idea to create a planning document for a new application and begin with a statement of the application's purpose and goals. Add some key performance measures, which, if accomplished, paint a picture of success. Now you're ready to plan the details of each key application component, personas and groups, record-based data, process models, and reports.